What's up internet? My name is Robert Teagarden and today I am reviewing the brand new Leaf Board. Leafboard's a brand new company that's entered in the electronic skateboard space. They just got out of their Kickstarter and Indiegogo of crowdfunding and started shipping boards to anxious backers within the last few weeks. They became of interest to many consumers because of their small compact size and their price point. Personally, I chose Leafboard because of the small size, which is about 24 inches by 10 inches wide, and the entry level price point, which is around 500 bucks when it's shipped to your front door. Leafboard is said to be able to hit speeds of up to 19 miles an hour. It has a full charge within 70 minutes. It has an 11 and a half mile range when it can climb hills of up to 28 degrees in grade. It has regenerative braking, portable charging, it has night light LED lights, has multi-mode features, and it is said to be somewhat water resistant. Initial impressions of construction are really good. I was really surprised to see how thick the actual board was. It's definitely a lot bigger than any seven to 10 ply that you would see on normal skateboards. I really love the style of this board, kind of throwing it back to an old stale fish type of board, like the first Alvas that we would see. Another really cool thing about this board is that it is a belt driven system as opposed to a hub driven system. What my hope is, is that this belt driven system actually gives a little bit more power, especially when going up minor grades, than we would see in a hub driven system in competitors like an Acton Blink. The wheels seem to be a great size as well. We can see that they're gonna be able to take little minor bumps on the road with ease. Inside the box, we obviously have the leaf board. Next thing we pull out is a smaller box that has inside of it the charger. It's got all of the manuals. It has a cool little tool case that has an extra belt, some Allen keys, and a truck tool to make some adjustments. It's also got a carrying case, which is pretty cool. You can stash the board and other accessories inside when you're on the go. And then there's a smaller micro USB cable that is for charging the Bluetooth controller. It doesn't have a plug, but you can either, you know, bus power this thing from your computer or use just a standard iPhone brick charger and that'll work just fine. The manual is helpful. I will say this, it's clear that Leafboard is not an American company. The English is a little interesting. So you get stuff inside the manual and you can figure out what's going on, but is it the most crystal clear thing that there is? Definitely not. On a Kickstarter Indiegogo campaigns, leaf board is set to come in at 9.7 pounds. I found that to be inaccurate. I found 11.4 pounds is where this thing weighed in. To me, that's not really that big of a difference, two pounds, but just letting you guys know in full transparency, it's a little bit heavier than they're saying it is. So electric skateboards have become really popular in the recent past. Uh, it's a fun, economical way to get around town and the obvious comparison that people are going to be making to this one is to the market leader, which is Boosted Board, and I guess for obvious reasons. They're definitely the clear market leader in this category. They've built their reputation on quality and customer service, and we also see very popular YouTubers like Casey Neistat, Jesse Wellen, Sarah Dietschy, Peter McKinnon, all of them are scooting around town on Boosted Boards, and for good reason. I mean, they're, they're quality products, they clearly last and a lot of people like them. And so I can understand why people are going to make this comparison between a boosted board and a leaf board. While it's easy to make this comparison, I do think that it's a bit unfair. Leaf board is clearly a new entrant in this phase. I just got my board out of a crowdfunding phase, so they definitely do not have a lot of time within this marketplace. Boosted board is at least two, three years within this market. So being the new entrant, it's hard to make that comparison. Also, the price point of the leaf board, clearly leaf board's going to a completely different market segment than a boosted board would be. The size and portability makes it a completely different customer that they're searching for. As I mentioned earlier, the main reason that I purchased a leaf board is because it's small size and portability. So it's just a different person that they're looking for. It's a different product. It's not fair to make that comparison and say that boosted board is the same type of thing as a leaf board or it's not as good as a boosted board. To me, if we're going to be real about this, to say that a boosted board and a leaf board are the same thing it would be like saying that a Mercedes S500 is the same thing as a Honda Civic. They're both great cars in their own right and they both serve a different purpose, but they're clearly not intended for the same customer. I think a much better comparison to make if we're going to make one would be like the Acton Blink S or the S2, but even then it's still a little bit different of a product. So 
I, for one, I'm giving Leaf Board a good chance. I'm hoping that they're going to do well. Uh, I'm hoping that this review can kind of convince you guys that if this is the particular product that you're looking for, a small portable electric skateboard that's in an affordable price range, you should give this thing a try. So now that I've got this thing out of the box, I gotta let it charge for a couple hours. I'm gonna go take it for a test run and see how we like it outside. So give me a couple minutes, and once this thing's up and ready, we'll go riding. So I'm at a local park, I got the leaf boards all charged up. It's a little windy, hopefully the noise doesn't bother you, but I think I'm gonna hop on this thing and see how it goes. First impressions, coming up. Here I go, full move throttle, first time. Dude, this is awesome. The nice easy roll onto the throttle. I'm in econ mode right now. I'm definitely moving pretty quick. I can easily see this thing getting up to 20 miles, no problem. All right, a little bit of braking, nice and easy. Good, the brakes are cool. I'm just barely putting it on. A little more throttle, here we go. Yeah, man. Okay, big turn. I'm gonna try and lean in hard, see if I can't accelerate out. God, this is awesome! This thing is so much fun. I can't even believe it. I, uh, I don't even know where to start. Um, so the battery, I've been here about an hour riding back and forth, definitely getting shots, but riding it hard. There's a slight grade going up this hill. I've started from a complete stop and it's gotten to speed relatively quickly. Battery life definitely has gone down. I'm at 66% right now. Obviously, if I'm hitting it hard and going up hills, it goes below this. Uh, I saw it as low as like 25 to 20, uh, but you know, regenerative braking is definitely a thing. You pull the brakes, you see the number go back up. And so, like I said, about an hour or so that I've been riding pretty damn hard. I'm at two thirds battery life left. I didn't take it out of econo mode more than one time into sport mode for a brief second. It definitely flies. I have no doubt that this thing can get up to 19 miles an hour. I'm 5'9", a buck 80, so this thing moves with me on it. I'd even venture to say for the first couple weeks, econo mode is totally fine for me. So for those that are concerned about speed and acceleration, I don't think that you're gonna have a problem unless you're a little bit bigger than I am. I think really my main takeaways for a first ride, you just have to be gradual with it. You can't be smashing the throttle or pulling the brake really hard. You'll go flying either way. So just be easy, nice and gradual. I think you guys are gonna love this thing. It's super, super cool. Let's go back to the office and I can wrap up a couple points and be done with this thing. All right, I'm back at the house. Only a couple things to talk about before I wrap this whole thing up. The remote is slightly tricky. When you first turn it on, you have to push down, not forward, backward, or side to side. You have to push down to unlock the remote. They do that as a safety mechanism, which actually is pretty cool, but it was just confusing to figure out. You double tap on the power button to select which mode you'd like to go into, whether it's econ, sport, or pro mode, and then you swipe to the right of the button of the remote in order to activate that particular mode and turn it on. Uh, the last thing I will say is that the trucks are pretty tight. I tend to like the trucks on my skateboards pretty loose because I like to lean in hard, uh, kind of like a snowboarding style to it. That's fine because they give you the truck tool so you can adjust it to whatever your preference would be. I just didn't feel like doing it right now on the first initial ride. So that about sums it up for me right now. If you guys like what you've seen, please go ahead and hit that like button. If you haven't already, subscribe. I put out a ton of different content, a lot of different subjects, whether it's business related, music related, vlogging, video work, reviews, all of that stuff. If you wanna hear anything else about this product, go ahead and leave it in the comments below. I'm definitely gonna be doing a follow-up video for this. So anything that you wanna know that you feel like I left out or you'd like to know more information on, go ahead and leave a comment. Other than that, thanks for watching. 
and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.